Hello, friends. It's Chop. When it comes to where we fall in the war on bugs. Absolutely. Kill Exter- them brutes. all. Get rid of them. No more. However, Matt. An only good bug is a dead bug. <laughs> I'm doing my part. Yep. Matt, however, in New York State, there are some people who are taking the side of the bugs. Okay. In, it's because courtesy of the New York Times. In the lanternfly war, some take the bug side. Wow. So I'll tell you what, talking... I'm from Buenos Aires, and I say <laughs> kill them all. Yeah, th- this is a little disturbing. You're talking about like genuine species treason yeah. here. Even as the invasive pest spreads across 11 states and threatens agriculture, lanternflies are winning sympathizers who resist kill-on-site orders. Who are these sickos? Who, what kind who of are weirdos these are we talking about? Well, the New York Times, thankfully, is going to tell us who they are. Yep. And uh, unfortunately, not their addresses and phone numbers. Seriously, <laughs> we, should, we need to find out where these people are. So, uh, this, this, uh, New York Times here. This is, you know, a, a different take on the war on bugs. So it begins, when Lee Weiss, 31, sees a spotted lantern fly, an invasive pest so voracious that it is the target of several officially sanctioned smash on-site campaigns, he acts swiftly. He scoops, up each crim- he scoops each crimson creature up, then he carefully hides it from any would-be assassins. So this guy's hiding lantern flies like fucking Anne Frank or something. And I'm like, okay, so he says, the target of several officially sanctioned smash on-site campaigns. I'm sorry, I thought all bugs... Where if it, like if you, if you are officially sanctioned to smash them on site, is there is there any bug that is like protected by the Endangered Species Act where you can't just step on it or swat it if it's in your house? Well, that's the thing is that obviously it's legal to kill all bugs. Yeah. This is different. They're saying now they're saying like yeah, it is your duty. Yeah, it is your civic duty. This is the big so reason. So like pythons in Florida. Here's the reason that this is a story because this is not just like hey, watch out for these guys or these aren't are good. This is actually telling people hey, you have an actual. Civic duty, a responsibility of citizenship involves killing these bugs. And that is, for a lot of people, too much to be asked. We are far too alienated from our institutions to take on that level of fealty to them, that we're going to carry out their actions to squash bugs. Now, that's the thing. A lot of people will do this happily because, hey, squashing bugs, it's fun. Going to have a good time, fuck the bugs, and I get to feel like a good person. But for some people who think it's gross... They would rather create a fantasy moral world where they're doing the right thing rather than just doing their civic goddamn duty as goddamn citizens of this country trying to trying to live, for Christ's sake. How about as human freaking beings? As human <laughs> beings, for crying out loud, help us out. Put in a fucking hand. Mr. Weiss is among an emerging group of conscientious objectors to the open season on the insect. Just go to Canada. Seriously. My country, love it or leave it, asshole. Indeed. Their reasons differ. Some are vegans who find killing pests eat wrong. The lanternfly, okay, others doubt the threat lanternflies pose or have been repulsed by the glee surrounding lanternfly annihilation. So they're like lanternfly truthers. Yeah. They're just like, they're no, like they're fine. They're actually good for yeah. agricultural crops. It's and, wonderful. Yeah. We love them. <laughs> and my favorite group, some people are faced with a flurry of lanternflies despite years of dedicated squashing and have just given up. So I mean, like, okay, like that's that's the reasonable group. See, they're that's just like, the one we're talking. They're just like I've surrendered to the bugs. Exactly. We're not going to get rid of like, these. We're not these, getting rid of them. Our civic infrastructure, the thing that you're trying to get enlist my help into, it doesn't exist. It's good effort after bad. I, I'm going to redirect my efforts elsewhere. And yeah, that is just a good moral uh, moral choice. It is not the evasion of a moral choice. Yes, exactly. What these people are doing. Still, another few think lanternflies are too cute to kill. The, the gray and red winged plant hopper from China. Oh, it's from China. Not good, folks. <laughs> it's from China. Gotta get rid of it. Uh, the, the gray and red winged plant hopper from China first showed up in Pennsylvania in 2014. It has since swarmed across at least 11 states, including New York, growing as an agricultural threat, particularly to grape harvests and fruit trees, according to the United States Department of Agriculture. Several studies on the encroaching invasion have projected that lanternflies could do upwards of hundreds of millions of dollars of damage. While the infestation rages on the East Coast, scientific models have predicted that the bugs could spread across the country, reaching California's wine country by the Not next good, decade. Not good, my delicious Sauvignon, Cabernet Sauvignons. It's so, they're so good. Well, if these cowards and traders in New York don't do, do their job. Yeah, you, know, you, you got to get out you, there. You guys in California are going uh, to be infested. There's going to be no more wines. I need my wine, folks. 
Don't talk to me until I've had my wine. There's a California wine. There's a it. California <laughs> wine inspired by that same bug excellence. <laughs> the bugs are prevented oh, in the bottles. Oh, the bugs. <laughs> oh, the lantern fly. They're crawling on my skin. <laughs> That's my impression of uh, Orson Welles is a crystal meth addict. <laughs> oh, the bugs. They're under my skin. <laughs> There's a California crystal meth inspired <laughs> by that same Mexican excellence. <laughs> to fight back, state and local officials in infested areas have enlisted their constituents in an anti-lanternfly militia. Authorities in battlegrounds such as New York, New Jersey, and in particular Pennsylvania, the insect's apparent ground zero, have framed the campaign against the creature as an act of civic duty. Yes. Where, where is Fetterman and Dr. Oz on this? Exactly. How come, is this an issue in the campaign? I'd like to, I'd like to see them weigh in on this. Well, I frankly. mean, this, is, this isn't a real thing. This is just, they made up a story. <laughs> I mean, even if these are all pe real people who are talking like and have earnest beliefs about this, you're talking about such a yeah. small group of people yeah, this is, that this isn't functionally a real story. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you can you can kill lantern flies all you want in Pennsylvania, but you can't get a fucking beer on Sunday. Get the yeah. fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Um, calls to action to civilians to stamp out the invaders, literally, have been enthusiastically met. In New York, Brooklyn summer campers engage in lantern fly hunts in the state park uh, and end the state park preserve on Staten Island hosted a squishathon in 2021. This is literally Starship Troopers. Yes. This is kids just stepping on bugs. Yeah. Everyone's doing their part. Are you? <laughs> the war effort needs your effort at work, at home, in your community. Whacking day. Yeah, whacking day. Last year, a New Jersey woman threw a lanternfly crushing pub crawl when Pennsylvania man developed an app that tracks users' kills called Squisher. All right, I'm starting to agree with the people who are against it. Yeah, see, now why can't we have anything? See, here's the thing. It's a civic duty, and there's yeah. the thing that we can't handle. We cannot handle the duty part. We either, like in a case like this, if we can have fun squashing ants, squashing bugs, we will find a way to make it fun. But uh, if we don't like that, then we'll find a way not to do it. Instead of just doing it as a civic duty, how about that? Instead of making it into a goddamn app, for Christ's sake. Mr. Weiss, a former instructor of Buddhist philosophy who lives in Philadelphia, has not crushed a single lanternfly. It's phrased in almost moral terms, said Mr. Weiss, of the rallying cries gathering the forces against lanternflies. The Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture runs a hotline to report the bugs at one 888 badfly and ask people to kill it, squash it, smash it, just get rid of it on its website. Okay, this is, this is veering into dangerous eliminationist rhetoric. It's true. And that's the thing is, like, I do feel like some people feel aw awkward about this because they feel like this is just the first step in, you know, the move <laughs> yeah, towards the eventually Holocaust, treating yeah. people like that. You should not concede <laughs> that they are. Which oh, is what you're no, doing. You're right. You're right. You That's going to make it easier to squash out. Yeah. <laughs> it's know? like, no, draw the line. This is a good thing to do because they're bugs. And they're we, not and, people. And like, and people, you know, like, and you know, we like fruits and vegetables. We need them. We need them. To you know? live. <laughs> so we're in competition with the bugs yes. on this. And one, one of us has got to go. Yeah, it's triage, baby. Uh, it says here, holding up a picture of a spotted lantern fly like a wanted poster, New York State Senator Chuck Schumer stood at a news conference near Central Park earlier this month calling for more federal funds to be used to fight the scourge. Again, I love that, like, Chuck Schumer, this is like <laughs> perfect Democrat politician stuff. Yep. These, are the these are the angry press conferences he's giving <laughs> about, just, about lantern flies. Yeah. Can put a fucking the Supreme Court justice on a wanted poster and get people to <laughs> squish them. <laughs> Parody. parody. That's a parody. Parody, parody in, in a video game. Yes. Imagine that were happening <laughs> in a video game. Perhaps the new Grand Theft Auto. Uh, in New York, officials first spotted the lantern fly on Staten Island in 2020. Since then, it has proliferated. Mr. Schumer said warning that leafy spots from Central Park to Long Island's wineries to the farms of upstate were at risk. The New York State Department of Agriculture and Markets has put out a hit and asked the public to report any sightings of the bug or to dispatch them. All right, here's where we get into some some real buttes. Like, like the, the two incredibly annoying people that they found to front the, yeah. the anti-lanternfly right. elimination. Uh, the fake non-story yeah. isn't real. <laughs> but, but, I mean, come on. Yeah, it's so funny. It's, uh, okay, Jody Smith, 33, a software developer, has so far declined. Mr. Smith is vegan, yet not an absolutist. He will exterminate cockroaches in his apartment in oh, Manhattan's Union Square. interesting. Very interesting. When it's affecting you personally. Yeah, yeah. All of a sudden, there's no moral, oh, there's no moral objection. 
Only when it's other people and their crops. He's a vegan. He should care about more than anyone about fruits and vegetables. Yeah. Interesting, though. Because, you know, I barely eat salad at all. You know, So he's basically <laughs> willing to impose, like, a castle doctrine, <laughs> yeah. like, libertarian non-aggression principle thing. We're like, well, it, as long as you're outside of my domicile, my arbitrarily determined fake property, then I can do whatever I want to you. That is, that's literally the basis of libertarian capitalist uh, morality. Well, I mean, Congratulations. This guy is a software developer. There we so, go. So, I mean, draw your own conclusions. But the state endorsed bloodlust when it comes to lantern flies, and the sense that they are disposable makes him uncomfortable. If someone was like, oh, we have to kill all the Pomeranians, people might feel a lot differently about it. I mean, well, I, wouldn't. Not- I wouldn't. <laughs> Well, <laughs> smash them, no. smash them, crush them. No, they're cute. Those guys are cute. They're so looking. Their, their little faces are always like their no, no, little no. smile. They look so I mean, dumb. If we're gonna, if we're gonna, if we're gonna do eliminationism to any breed of dog, you you know which one is first on the chopping block. Which one? Pit bulls. Oh God. Pit bulls. I mean, if you see one, if you, if you see one, it is your duty. Like half the it's country a, is there already. You need though. to get in a kinetic situation because immediately. We do have places where there are basically <laughs> kill on site orders for pit bulls in this country. Uh, and I guess like it's so funny. He's like, "Oh, if we have to kill all the Pomeranians, people might feel differently." Well, yeah, killing a dog is just massive, massive bloodletting of dogs Why? openly yeah. in the what street. What is the purpose That's, of this? I'm sorry, that is different yes, than insects. It's a different thing. <laughs> if people were just going around with hammers, smashing toy poodles on the street, yeah. it would be, like be, that would be disturbing. It's, be, a, it's an offense to the senses. It's <laughs> yes, the, and it's because of it's because of its gratuity. Yes, yeah. it is gratuitous. <laughs> this is not gratuitous. Yes, some people are trying to get some fun out of it because people need to have fun, or else they're going to kill themselves at every moment of their lives. But it is not gratuitous. They have to go. A spokesman for Senator Schumer, Angela Rofero, encouraged New Yorkers to keep on smashing. He would not entertain mis- misgivings like Mr. Smith's. Individuals who feel that way can report them to New York State or look away. Though, I mean, I think you should take a stronger stance against these traitors. Honestly, honestly, like, honestly yeah. what are you people bitching about? There's not even a criminal sanction associated with this. It's just your nagging conscience. Those tasked with protecting agriculture will say sympathy for the lanternfly is misguided. We can understand the hesitancy to kill the spotted lanternfly, which appear colorful and harmless. Christopher Logue, director of plant industry for New York State Department of Agriculture and Markets, said in an email, however, the damage this invasive species can do in harming important crops and impacting our food system is real. He added, we just can't take the chance. Why take a chance? I mean, why take a chance? I would, I would agree with that. That's, but just, that's like, just how I feel. The U.S. agricultural supply chain is doing so good right now <laughs> that I think it could withstand a few lantern flies. These people, you know who these people are? These are the people in the fucking zombie movie who won't shoot one of their family members. Yes, they turn, yes, and then yes. Everybody else gets killed. And like they're like, they're like, you know, like, like it's old yellow. They're like, Paul, Paul, you still there? Yeah, yeah. Just, and then they bite them, and then they end up biting everybody, and the entire fucking cabin burns to the you ground. You have to destroy the brain. You got to kill the brain. Shoot them in the head. People for the ethical treatment of animals offered a less than full throated defense of the lantern fight. Look, if PETA. Is sort of like if, on if the you fence can't about get this. them you can't on get board those for your goofy, looter, fucking looter, indulgent uh, animal those goofies, rights, those bozos. Uh, the advocacy group did not. The, the, advoc- the advocacy group did advise people, however, to carefully consider their actions if it involves killing any living being, no matter how small or unfamiliar. Said Katie Cryar, a PETA spokeswoman. But I mean, she's basically saying she's like, like you, 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 carefully consider it, but take them out, the then kill it, just kill, kill it. Despite her distaste for the lanternfly, Karen Charles, 31, has gone out of her way to avoid harming them. Ms. Charles, a YouTube content creator from Parlin in central New Jersey, was playing with her two-year-old daughter atop a playground slide when she found her way down the ladder blocked by two lanternflies. It was go down this slide or kill the bugs, and I don't want to stomp on them, she said. So she essentially avoided playing with her child to spare the lives of two flies that were on a slide. Freak. Absolute bozo. What is wrong with you people? <laughs> what? what I got to say, Land of Flies, RIP bozo. Pack watch. <laughs> <laughs> Stopping her was a mix of fear and pity, she said. They're creepy. I hate them. But I feel a little bad for them and for me. This is just like, what is this self-loathing like, reflected who? back on you? Like, <laughs> and uh, You should not be identifying with an insect. I mean, yes, in a cosmic sense, of course, we're all connected and all part of a great chain of being. But from a practical perspective, the individual relationship between the human and representative of the broader ecosystem and an individual fly, it's, it's 
catastrophic. It's massive. Flies do not have any sympathy for you. No. Or anything else. They have they no can't. feeling. They have, they have no pity, no mercy. Yeah. It says, uh, Mr. she ended up squeezing down the slide alongside her daughter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Aware that their un- their opinions are unpopular, those championing lantern flies often do so in secret. Except like a- or in the New York Times. <laughs> it's like those re- two places, secretly or in the biggest newspaper. Like the resistance in the resistance movement under the the lantern fly underground. Catherine Bonner, twenty two, a Temple University student in Philadelphia, shares her lantern fly sympathies. How the red spots on their faces look like they are wearing blush, only with a few close friends. It's like that movie Mimic where like cockroaches become <laughs> mutated and yeah. start looking like people when they're yeah. like in their carapace or whatever. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, look, it's like one of us. Ah! It's, uh, it's, wearing, it's wearing blush. Well, these people would obviously be very easily fooled by them. Uh, the bugs didn't ask to be invasive. They're just living their own life, Ms. Bonner said. Yeah, and so are we. Yeah. I would be bummed if I suddenly started existing somewhere I wasn't supposed to exist and everyone started killing me for it. Yeah, like that would be bad. <laughs> yeah, because you are a person. <laughs> And you could not be a lantern you're right. fly. This is very interesting. Where it's just like people are just like, like if we can, like they're just projecting like all these human moral values onto insect species. Yeah, which is sort of is is disturbing in its own right because it just if the life of a human is equivalent to that of a lantern fly, ninety nine point nine percent of the population, if they like accept that as a moral proposition, yeah, will have no problem killing either of them. It's true. You are the ones <laughs> equating insects and people here. That it cannot be emphasized enough. It says <laughs> an invasive species like colonizers. She's already an invasive species in this continent. She, she, wait, lady, hold on. Yes, indeed she is. Boom, colonizer. Right, colonizer, invasive species. Get yep. out of here. Yet even an ardent fan, Ms. Bonner likes to hold them and take them for rides in her palm. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right, Juno from the film Juno. Is ambivalent mm. about her advocacy. I feel like I'm evil saying this because I know they are so bad for the environment, she added. Just get... Can people just like it's just they can't even be weird without questioning their weirdness and just sort of like the yeah wicked. I'm, sa- I'm saving these lanternflies but I feel I, I feel bad killing them but I also feel bad because they're harming other people and I just like get into like this moral merry-go-round where it's just and like there's that, no way off this carousel that is the what the cause of the mania of confession that we have yeah the way that people feel the need to express all this stuff that like is something really for you to deal with. But they make, may need to make it other people's problem because they need to hear that it's okay. Because they have no moral framework to actually make a decision. Because they are, at the end of the day, just narcissists, as we mostly are in this country, in this world at this point. And we can only operate through a narcissistic lens. But that doesn't resolve these kind of questions. And so we have to just end up confessing the part of us that feels guilty because we were not able to just... Come to a decisive decision to do something. You know who? Uh, you know who are not the group that's not plagued by narcissism. Lantern, lantern flies. Lantern flies. That's true. Let's let them go in charge for a while. <laughs> How would we let a swarm of lantern flies be the Republican nominee in 2024? <laughs> Lanternfly defenders argue that the widespread and costly destruction the bugs are supposedly capable of has not fully materialized. <laughs> oh, okay, it's not that bad. <laughs> so let's just wait and see what well, happens. Never mind, it'll be all right. Again, we have so much. Uh, we have so much uh, of a margin to work with right now. Uh, lanternflies, for example, do not appear able to kill mature hardwoods as initially feared. But Shannon Powers, a spokesperson, a spokeswoman for the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture, said they are not to be underestimated. Some vineyards in southeast Pennsylvania, she said, have lost over 90 percent of their crops to the insect. Vineyards looked like they had been burned to the ground, Ms. Powers said. And just how effective all the smashing is remains in question. Despite multi-year pro-squash campaigns, the bugs seem almost unchecked and their numbers can have grown. Well, that's sort of the question I had in mind about all this, where it's like, even if like every citizen of the country yeah, there's so were to engage in a, a so round-the-clock bug yeah. smashing campaign where they like they find the bugs, smash them, kill them, destroy them, burn them. It's an it's a bug species. Yeah. This is a plague. It's yeah. just like there, there's no like there's nothing to be, I mean, I guess you can, like, do your best. Yeah. But, like, come on, it, it's going to be. And this is where you can come to that moral conclusion. Of just, like, oh, yeah, I've given up. I have I other care. things to do. <laughs> yeah. And then, and the thing is, again, I respect it because it was come to through an honest, you know, uh, process. You did not uh, avoid the problem by retreating to some fake morality. This is totally situational, totally arbitrary, like that asshole who will kill cockroaches. And here's the thing, even, even if you want to talk about, like, oh, the dangers of, of, of this sort of thinking, you know, uh, how it might uh, impact the way we deal with people, any minimally competent government 
of any kind of composition would do something like this, would try to stop these fucking bugs. Of course, most minimally competent gov- governments wouldn't let it happen in the first fucking place. But we don't have one of those, which well, is why I could see it if people just stopped caring. Well, speak, speaking of other people who have stopped caring, uh, Felix has checked in the chat here. He says, fuck, I'm sorry. I took a nap and slept through the alarm. It's fine. Smash him like a bug. We should smash him <laughs> like a bug. We're doing the five pests campaign, folks. We're adding Felix. He's up there with the sparrows now. <laughs> It should be said, though, <laughs> that uh, that was a huge backfire and contributor to the uh, massive famines of the Great Leap Forward was uh, the four pest campaign in China. <laughs> when they were like, get rid of all these sparrows. And then it why turns did they, out. Why, like, why did they want to get rid of sparrows? Because they were a nuisance, basically. Wait, 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 who's ever been annoyed by a sparrow? There are a lot. Like of them. seagulls. No. Seagulls are annoying. They're they like annoying. pigeons are annoying. They take your food and shit. Sparrows it are was just delightful. Thought that they were a hindrance to some agricultural okay. process. I don't know which specific one. But when they were gone, it proved, oh no, they were keystone to certain processes and they fucked up uh, uh, fucked up agricultural yields big time. Uh, but again, that's then. They didn't know no better. We know better now. Yeah. And lantern flies are not sparrows. Okay. A 2021 study by researchers at Lafayette College in eastern Pennsylvania indicated that eradication efforts focusing on the insect's ability to reproduce are among those most likely to make a dent. Yeah, like if there was some sort of like, like I don't know, uh, chemical that could uh, sterilize them or you could get them before they're bur- born or before they're hatched or whatever. Jeez, this looks, this sounds like a job for government. <laughs> sure would be useful if we had some uh, body capable of coordinating human activity in the most effective way possible towards a given end. 